Hello everyone. Welcome to the psychology course. We will continue with chapter 7, personality. Today we have a lot of topics to cover. Firstly, we will talk about defining and measuring personality. Then, psychoanalytic and psychodynamic approaches to personality. Also, behavioral approach, cognitive approach, humanistic approach, and lastly, trait approach to personality. We should firstly try to define personality. In psychology, we can define personality as a psychological construct that characterizes our relatively enduring patterns of thinking, feeling, and acting, which is unique to us and differentiates us from other people. Personality is the psychological mechanism that organizes how people perceive and interact with their environment, so their thoughts, feelings, and behaviors occur in accordance with each other. How we define personality certainly influences how we measure it. Still, it is possible to classify these tools under three general categories. Subjective measures of personality, objective measures of personality, and projective tests. It should be noted that personality assessment is usually conducted in clinical settings and in job interviews by skilled professionals. Let's look into psychoanalytic and psychodynamic approaches to personality. Among personality theories, Freud's psychoanalytic theory is one of the most influential and the most controversial. As a result of his studies, he developed a comprehensive explanation about the organization of human mind and personality. Psychoanalytic theory depicts id, ego, and superego as the three basic dynamic structures of personality. It involves biological impulses, drives, and motives. Developing at the ages of four to five, superego represents moral rules, social norms, and values. On the one side, we have primitive drives and motives, and on the other side, we have social norms and prohibitions. Ego mediates this conflict, which functions at the conscious and pre-conscious level. Psychoanalytic theory proposes that personality develops in accordance with the sexual development. That's why the theory is labeled as psychosexual development. Psychosexual development begins at infancy, follows through five stages, and lasts into adulthood. The stages are consecutive, meaning that every child goes through these stages in the same order. Neo-Freudians accepted the basic notions of psychoanalytic approach. Rather than theorizing personality in psychosexual terms, they focused more on the role of the conscious mind and non-sexual motives. Carl Gustav Jung proposed an alternative theory of personality in which he also mentioned three basic structures, but he labeled them as ego, personal unconscious, and collective unconscious. Let's move to behavioral approach to personality. Behavioral approach is not scientifically interested in what is happening inside the mind. It is rather concerned with only what is observable, the behavior and how situational determinants shape the behavior. In fact, the influence of the environment is the most prominent feature of the behavioral approach. In the learning theory, there are two types of reinforcements and punishments, positive and negative. You might think of positive and negative as adding or removing something rather than something good or bad. A positive reinforcement is giving something in order to increase the frequency of a behavior. Negative reinforcement, on the other hand, is removing something in order to increase the frequency of a behavior. Contrary to reinforcement, punishment decreases the probability of the occurrence of a behavior. A positive punishment is again giving something that wasn't previously evident in the environment, like the teacher's scolding behavior. On the other hand, negative punishment is removing something in order to decrease the frequency of the behavior. Now we should try to understand the cognitive approach to personality. Cognitive theory basically claims that how we think, perceive, and give meaning to the events in our environment modify our behaviors, emotions, and ultimately our personality. These interpretations are subjective and reflect our personal experiences as well as our personality characteristics. Hence, individual differences derivate from personal constructs of external events, and in order to understand personality, examining how we interpret the events is more important than the actual events themselves. It is said that individuals strive for understanding themselves, other people, and the events happening in their environment. 
Much like scientists, first people develop certain hypotheses which reflect their interpretations of previous experiences. There is also the humanistic approach to personality. Humanistic approach differentiates from other perspectives in the sense that it doesn't focus on flaws and weaknesses of human beings. Instead, humanistic theory highlights the positives of mankind like dignity, free will, and responsibility, claiming that every individual possesses an inherent worth despite the behaviors might not be occasionally positive. The approach relies on the idea that individuals strive for actualizing their full potentials. Being psychologically healthy requires gaining self-awareness and taking responsibility of one's actions. Abraham Maslow's noteworthy contribution to humanistic psychology includes the concepts of self-actualization and the hierarchy of needs. Self-actualization means that every individual is in a constant struggle for achieving their full potential, and this is what makes life meaningful for human beings. Our last topic is trait approach to personality. The trait approach to personality is basically concerned with understanding individual differences. However, the theory doesn't aim to specify and predict the individual differences at the behavioral level. In fact, trait approach emerged to study the variations among individuals that led to consistent cognitive, emotional, and behavioral patterns, which are traits. There is a model called Big Five Traits. These factors are neuroticism, extroversion, conscientiousness, agreeableness, and openness to experience. Neuroticism is defined as the chronic instability of emotional adjustment. Extroversion, being an interpersonal construct, is closely associated with positive effect. Conscientiousness points out individual differences in terms of responsibility, reliability, organization, control. Agreeableness, like extroversion, is an interpersonal construct. Finally, openness to experience refers to the imaginative, novelty-seeking, and flexible part of the personality structure. So, this is the end of our program for Chapter 7 of the Psychology course. Goodbye, and see you in our next program, Chapter 8. Thank you.